is the pom-pom attached to the end of a great male lion. This, everybody, is Safari Live. Right, everybody. Well, that's a good start, isn't it? And four more in front of us walking down the road. Byron is the other vehicle out so far, and Taylor will shortly be uh, on walk. Senzor is on camera today. That is Senzor's, well, very elegant thumb. Uh, you are most welcome. You're the most important of what we do. And the most important thing that you can do this morning is to send us questions and comments. Hashtag Safari Live is how you do that. That's on Twitter. If you don't know how Twitter operates, I'm very sorry, but it's very easy to figure out. And I'm sure if you've got this far in your social media existence, you'll get that far too. So hashtag Safari Live. There he is. He's marking territory now. Chris Animal Mobile down Philemon's dip at the moment. There we go. What a wonderful start to the day. I would had fears of it being another day of flowers, grasses and trees. Especially when we heard him calling as we got into camp this morning. And the reason I say that, of course, is because so often we hear them calling at night and then we come out in the morning and they've crossed south or north. So we'll follow him for as long as we can. He's been shouting his head off, beautifully calling. And now all he's doing is marking his territory without sound, but with scent. He's calling now. And you can't believe the distance that they can cover. Walking at that sort of what looks like a gentle loping sort of stroll. But they will cross, if he carries on in this direction, he'll cross over the boundary in less than 10 minutes. I was rather hoping Wendy would just ease her way down the road, but because there's still a lot of moisture in the soil, there's quite a lot of mud. There's been a lot of activity on this road during the night, and he has actually come, he lay down here and scraped earlier today. It's almost like he's come up. Now he's turned around and gone back down the same route that he's come up, or that he came up earlier on. Yeah. He's now, of course, relieving himself, which will result in the world's foulest smell assailing our nostrils fairly soon. It's about, I believe, around about 20 degrees or so. I've forgotten the temperature exactly, but it's about 20 degrees Celsius as far as I remember which puts us at about 69 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry, 65 and 19. Yeah, Rebecca, you're right, I agree. You say that his belly looks kind of full and you wonder what he ate. I have no idea, but I would agree with you completely that he did eat something. His belly does look full. What can you smell, old fellow? And if you are maybe a new viewer and you've just come across this stream, this is a member of the Birmingham Boys. They are the dominant male coalition of lions of this area. They dominate two prides, the Styx and the Inkuhumas, both of which have been conspicuous by their absence on account of the fact that their sort of dominant prey animal, the buffalo, has been away from this area during the course of the rainy season and so we're expecting much more activity from them in the not too, uh, well, the not too distant future. I'm just looking at the ground because it looks to me like a male leopard went up the road. This lion is about four and a, well, about four feet at the shoulder, so he's tall. He's not filled out quite to the extent that he's going to. He's going to get bigger. He'll probably be, ooh, yeah, he probably won't get any taller, but when he finally attains his full mass in maybe two years' time, close to 180 kilograms, which is about 400 pounds. 
and he's got a small sniffle. Just gave us a little bit of a look there. I'm Bonnie, you're in Australia, and you're wondering if lions have different calls. I'm assuming you mean from each other, and absolutely they do, Bonnie. They are recognizable to each other. Their individual calls are recognizable to each other, and certainly you apparently they've done experiments where they will play the calls of certain lions to other lions, and they react totally differently to unfamiliar lions from the way that they would react to lions they're familiar with. So yes, they do recognize each other's calls and the calls of strangers. And of course he's hearing things, that he's hearing a whole suite of things that we are not picking up on. He has much more sensitive ears than our human ears, and I think he's listening probably for his coalition mates. Now, I'm going to avoid bashing in after him. We're going to try and pick him up the other side of this block. Because we haven't really had a good look at him from the front. So while we do that, Baron is driving down over there. He's going to be very upset, of course, because <laughs> he too was looking for the lion. He just took a limb self a little shortcut and now he's on Ingwe Alley Road. Sorry, I'm just gonna need to get onto the game drive radio. Animal is now mobile east along Ingwe Alley Road towards the pans. I think he will cross the drainage there onto Twin Dams. And you hear the Franklins shouting at him. Depends where you are, Chris. If you're on Philemon's dip now, come straight on to Ingwe Alley and then uh, you'll catch me there. There we go. Negative, north of the riverbed. Uh, it's a sort of uh, skeleton road that was put in between Twin Dams and Philemon's dip. Sorry, I'm just trying to help with the Chris get here on the Game Drive channel, but my attention is now fully with you. And the lion is marking his territory frantically. Where he find found all that water to drink, I don't know. Clearly he's a of reserves. And as the Franklins are alarm calling to the right hand side, so are the rattling cesticulars going to the left. It's almost a little bit like a sort of a fanfare, if you like, as the royalty of the wilderness comes wandering past. So there he is there, maybe going to have a little drinky, or probably just bypass the pans, actually. There he goes. And I think what he's going to do is probably head straight across down through the drainage line and onto Twin Dams Road. I think Chris has managed to pick him up there. <laughs> We're just going to try and get into a position where we can see him. There we go. That's not his best angle. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I know. <laughs> that's, that's not the best lining angle you've ever had. And so I think I'm going to try and find a better position than this uh, very unceremonious yoga pose. Uh, let's head across to Taylor and say good morning to her. <laughs>